So I have two goals for this presentation. The first one is not to sound as boring as the title may suggest. And uh, secondly, to give you a brief overview about the tool we created in the Clarin Plus project. But firstly, really just a brief overview. Um, one of the pillars of Clarin is that every scholar should have a single sign-on access for research purposes. What does that mean? It means you have to have a username and a password, and you should be able, with this one username and password, access the resources, data services in the Clarin infrastructure. Why? Well, some of the, uh, some of the services or some of the data may be restricted by a restrictive license, because all data has to have a license. And um, the service would like you to sign a license, so that's why you need username and password. Or you would like to see the history of uh, searches um, in, in a web service, that's why you need to be identified. That's also why uh, we need the username and password. And finally, for example, for group collaboration, you have to identify your colleagues. So that's why we need um, um, this identity. But as a service provider, you have to have also some requirements put on these identities. Um, these are by no means the only requirements, but these are the basic ones. First of all, you would like the user to be identified to a real person. You would like the user to be identified to a real person in time and also to the same person in time. So when someone signs a license, it would be nice in five years to know that who signed it and that is the same person. And also if your service requires more information like an email, like affiliation, entitlement, you should get these basic attributes. But even with these two simple requirements, there are already a lot of problems going on. One of them is that uh, the registration policies are really different and um, and there are IDPs who does not identify you because the big advantage of the home organization giving you identities is that they are trustworthy. It means that when you are at the university, you will not get an academic degree without someone identifying you, and also you will not uh, get a salary in an institute without being identified. So that's the one advantage of this. But if there is an IDP who just you know, doesn't require anything but an email, this is a problem. And the second problem is that the attributes um, are not released as you would like to. And this is why, and this is what this presentation is about. There are many more problems. However, uh, I would like to stop here, stop complaining, and let's look at the positive side. So what is the state of the art of the uh, authentication and authorization infrastructure? So the positive thing is that there are no technical, real technical problems. So usually that's configuration problems or that the identities, uh, the identity providers just lack knowledge or they are very uh, mistrusting, so they just say that nothing will be released. But these are not technical problems. The other issue is that there are thousands of identity providers in the world. In the Clarion Service Provider Federation, there are mm, around uh, yeah, one and a half thousand uh, identity providers. So um, here there are two and a half thousand, which is also including other uh, interfederation, interfederations. Um, the results have been introduced largely by the community because they needed more uh, home organizations to attend, so they minimized the requirements and, uh, and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of problems. We would like to focus an, on, on two of them, um, and uh, I will in more detail speak about one of them, which is the attribute release. Um, to be even more positive, I have to say that uh, from our experience, the situation, the quality of interfederating has improved. And I also dare to say that in some aspects, the improvements have been thanks to the clarion to all the people working on the Clarence Service Provider Federation and also to the service providers. However, this came at a cost. And the cost were many, many hours spent in monitoring, in uh, just dealing with those identity providers. Now the question is, can we do better? 
and um, also when the service provider federation grows and grows, it would be very difficult uh, to maintain and to ask all of the service providers to do a lot of uh, additional work. So the answer is yes, we can do better, and we can do better by creating a tool that simplifies life of the service providers. They will just deploy it once, and unless they really want to, they can just forget, and the quality of the interfederation will improve for them. The same goes for identity providers. Because of how the Clarence Service Provider Federation is set up, we can tell an IDP provider to use specific rules, and it will work from that time to all current and future service providers in the SPF. So this is also very important. Just imagine you are a maintainer of an IDP and you will get 30 emails from 30 service providers in the SPF asking them to just fix the attribute release problem. So that might be a problem for you. And the solution to this is the attribute aggregator. And um, this, is a, this is a tool we created in the Clarion Plus project and it collects names of released attributes. Again, only the names, not the values. And it processes them and creates some statistics and so on. So the, the basic idea is really simple. From the technical point of view, the processing is really much more difficult than, than just collecting names. But this is a simple tool which can really help us in achieving our goals. Um, few more details, the attribute aggregator, uh, it's a script uh, that can be used with Shibboleth, and uh, that's most used federation software. And there is another script which is a bit less precise, but it can be used with any um, federation software. And then there is the web application, front end and back end. <coughs> and now hopefully the more interesting parts, I will have some more pictures, some more maps. So. Um, there are at the moment nine participating service providers. So the message of this slide is please, if you are a maintainer of a service provider, don't hesitate to participate. Just uh, contact us and uh, you will deploy the script once and from that time you will be monitored uh, centrally. So uh, going on the map from, from top to bottom, the, the dark blue uh, countries are the participating providers. The other, the other Colors, I'm not sure whether you see it, are plus minus uh, the members of Clarin. It's not precise, but it's plus minus. So um, from top, there are three service providers from uh, Finnish Clarin, from CSC, two from Germany, from, from Clarin D. There is uh, one uh, global one in the Clarin Eric office. Then there is us, which is the Lindat Clarin in the Czech Republic. And then there are two, which were the first when I don't count us, the first two users of this attribute aggregator, and that's Clarin Italy, Clarin IT, and one service provider from Slovenian Clarin. So one more time, please join if there are any service provider maintainers. Um, the first URL is the link where you can find it at the moment. Um, you can access it. Uh, with authentication, but maybe in future we will see the participating federations will always, uh, the participant service providers will always have access, but um, uh, for the moment you can, you can have a look at that. It's open source and um, it was deployed uh, at the end of April, so it's really running only a couple of months and uh, uh, service provide, some of the service providers joined really recently. Um, the statistics, the initial statistics, were imported from our service provider, which is the Lindat Clarin. The IDB count has increased. At the moment, of, I, I just created these slides, I think, two days ago. So at the moment, there, there, are, there are already 183 uh, IDPs, which means a user from one of 183 home institutions tried to access Clarin infrastructure using those nine service providers. We don't uh, so we don't store the counts of how many IDPs we have contacted, but we know that it's more than 10 which agreed to fix these attribute problems on the Clarin level, on the Clarin wide level. So for current and also for all the future service providers and SPF. Um, and there were also several federation issues identified which have been also fixed. So the tool has been already uh, improving the quality. 
Now, this is an interesting map as well. So these are those 180 uh, free or 180 IDPs on the map. Um, as you can see, there are also identity providers outside of the Clarin SPF because some of the service providers are interfederate, interfederating also using other federations. But it's kind of clear that even there are users from America um, on the left side. That's not a that's not a an error. That's Hawaii. Uh, uh, but the most users come from from Europe. And here I have also one note that some of national federations they expose only one identity provider. Uh, this means that in Norway, if any of the home organizations try to access clear infrastructure, we will always see it as one. So the 182 or 83, that count is a bit ambiguous depending on what you really count, but for some countries, we will always have only one. Um, so, uh, now this is how it looks, the front end of the, of the web application. So on the left side, Hopefully you can see it is an IDP, identity provider, saying when a user tried to authenticate via that IDP to which service provider. Um, in this case, it's the University of Tampere to Corp. Uh, there is a face. If it's smiling, it means that there was nothing too bad. Uh, in this case, it was kind of okay because the uh, attributes were released and uh, you see all, also very important other information. You can cross check if uh, everything is working because there are some means how to tackle the uh, attribute release problem and um, you just you can be tagged uh, and if both have if the identity providers and the service provider have the same tag they should release all the attributes the service provider requests so you can also cross check some more information the what the range what you can check here is really big but the important at the moment the important part is the smiling or non-smiling face and when there is a non-smiling face, uh, at the moment it means that uh, the user or the, the identity provider hasn't released any identification. What it means? It means that I am a service provider. I know that the user selected home organization from the list. He went there. Uh, he put in his username and a password. It was successful, but all I got was uh, information that yes, Nothing else. So yes, there was a user who tried to authenticate, but I don't know anything about him. So I really can't use it. I don't have even his ID. So in this case, uh, there is the envelope, the red envelope button. Uh, and if you press that, you will get an email uh, created for you, which has a lot of information for the identity provider, also for the service provider to keep track uh, whom you already contacted. And it says all the technical information, including solution for them how to fix it on a Clarion level, saying that if they don't fix it on the Clarion level, then they can have many more emails coming. So um, this is the emails. Uh, this is the most important feature. So one click creating an email, but it has proved itself very uh, important. Um, so now I'm going to the finish of this presentation. So one more time, because I think there were a lot of information. So we created an attribute aggregator. It collects attribute names. It identifies problematic connections when there are no attributes released, when there is incorrect behavior. Uh, you can report issues using one click, and we can do it widely on all the participating service providers. And also, uh, we can create very nice statistics, as you have seen, on maps and, uh, yeah, and also counts and so on. And the last slide is about future work. So there are still some national uh, federations which uh, tag clearing service providers in a, with a different tag. Um, so there is a, at the moment one, we have to talk with them to change it. So then the filters using the clearing service provider tag will work. And um, there is also one important project, which was done by, by Martin from the Finnish Clarin. It's called the Attribute Checker. And um, it solves the, the, the following issue. So when I'm a user and I access a service from the Clarin infrastructure, 
and um, the mandatory attributes were not released or none of the attributes were released, I see usually an error page. And when I see the URL, I know it's the service in Clarion. So what I think is uh, the problem is inside the Clarion, but this is not the case. So unless you have your own AI specific error messages, you can use this attribute checker and it will inform the user that yes, there was an error, but it's not us. The problem is in your home organization. So please contact them or just wait for um, the others to solve it. In our case, it's the attribute uh, aggregator. So thank you. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Um, and I see here are already questions. <laughs> a few years ago, we also had problems getting this working simply within the Netherlands. And even though um, a, a mail was sent uh, to all the universities and all the institutes by uh, NVO, the sort of funding organization with the president of the NVO, and even if it was sent by Stephen Crower and the, the, or the, the Eric, no response from the relevant organizations. So what we did instead is we contacted individual uh, important researchers, professors of the particular institutes and asked them to ask the question. And then it worked much faster to, to get these things done. So would that be a model that you could consider? Well, two things to say. First of all, there are two and a half, or there are thousands of IDPs, so we can't do it um, uh, for all of them. But this is exactly what I uh, what I meant when I was saying that uh, in the last years we have seen really big improvements. And uh, as you said, there was ignorance before or a lack of knowledge mostly. But also on the uh, national federation level, the operators kind of understood that uh, even though they have IDPs, then the real advantages to have services which the users use. So they understand this and then try to really help us in this. So for example, in Germany, which is uh, by far the most problematic countries, there are very good national operators. And if we don't have a response, we just CC the national operator and he helps uh, just finding the contacts. So you are totally right. But now we haven't seen really an email saying that, uh, no, just, just get us a user. Uh, or get us an important person, or just ignore us. So this is what we have seen lately. This is one of the improvements we have seen. Um, yeah, thanks for your presentation. Um, uh, I'm, I'm from Norway, and in Norway there is usually not a problem uh, releasing attributes. Uh, but we have a different problem, and that is uh, the opt-in problem. Uh, that um, through, through our national IDP uh, provider, uh, we are only allowed to log into those services that are, have been cleared beforehand uh, nationally or, or through our home institution. And it's a whole trajectory from, from the researcher to the home institution to the national IDP and then, and then uh, looking at, you know, can, can we use uh, the IDP to actually connect? And I wonder if, if, if similar techniques to what you are now proposing for attribute release can be applied to solve the opt-in problem. Well. In this case, it's more of a question to, uh, to, to Dieter because of the Clarion Service Provider Federation, but it's mostly about uh, discussion with, with the national federations. That's yes. Maybe I can quickly comment on that. It's indeed a case that uh, I think the opt-in is far more problematic in most cases than the attribute release. We see the attribute release organically being solved also by the nice actions from, from uh, USF and his team. Um, I think for this opt-in, this is really something, especially when it's centrally organized, something that needs to be changed in the policy. So I think for Norway that we need to go to the uh, national federation operator, talk to them, maybe engage some high-standing researchers and try to make clear that this model doesn't work. They actually, they realize that we've been talking to them before, but it needs to be stressed a little bit more. And also, I think by telling them that they are one of the few federations in Europe who, who is actively taking that kind of policy. Uh. I thank you once more.